Hello, I'm Bart. And I'm Mike. And we're MTG Lab. Today we'll present you with a standard playtesting video on Critic Journey into Next expansion. We don't have full spoilers, but we would like to show you some sweet new cards. Let's get to the games! Hello everyone, this is Bart, and today I'm gonna take Mono Black Aggro deck after Journey into Next. The only and the most important addition to this deck is Norald Scarhide, because after the 19 x you'll be able to run 12 creatures costing 1 mana with 2 power. Norald Scarhide is slightly better than the rest, as it can be used as an enchant creature to make your guys bigger, or just prevent your opponent's creature from blocking. Then we have 4 copies of Pains here, but don't... Uh, set your mind to draw a card every turn because your opponent won't allow it uh, if you draw a card it's great but if you don't and your opponent wastes a, a blocker to, to block a pain zero, it's also good then we have four copies of spiteful returned which is good against control decks but it's uh, a side out against other creature matchups as it's only one one uh, then we have mogus's marauders and heralds of torment these are great to finish your opponent off after dealing him some damage earlier in the game. Mogus's Marauder sometimes works like a, like Brave the Elements in my 20 decks when uh, you just make um, all your board unblockable for one turn with one card and, and finish your opponent off. And the same goes for Herald of Torment because there are not many that many flyers in the format but it will usually take more than one swing to, to kill your opponent with, with this uh, guy. Then uh, we have uh, six removal spells. Uh, Hero's Downfall is of course the best one, but it's the most expensive one and you try to kill your opponent as fast as possible and you uh, won't be able to uh, run more than two, I think, because they're just too expensive. Uh, two Doom Blades, which are great and the best uh, spot removal against non-black decks. And since uh, the meta game consists of many mono-black controls, you have to run to ultimate prices. Uh, of course, they will find their targets in non-black decks, but they are just uh, necessary to fight other black constructions. Four Falsies are great with 12 one drops because when you have 16 spells costing 1 mana you might uh, keep hands with a uh, lower number of lands and than usual uh, so Falsies uh, is uh, of course one of the best cards for this uh, type of deck and it's also great because you can strip your opponent off the, the most important uh, uh, card against you. If, as for lands, you, you have just uh, 19 swamps and 4 copies of Mutavolt. Um, there is no need to run more than 23 lands. Uh, in my opinion, this is sufficient and and uh, 4 Mutavolts uh, is um, just a necessary choice for such kind of construction. Going to sideboard, we have uh, three life main zombies, which are uh, important against mm, red green uh, Naya decks or or um, green white de uh, creature decks because they have just better creatures. You have to be able to run around them uh, or uh, take them out of your opponent's hand. Then we have uh, three duresses uh, alongside with. Two copies of Erebos. These are cards against control matchups because you have to uh, strip your uh, opponent's hands from uh, verdicts or prevent them from gaining life uh, from um, Sphinx's revelation, as well as uh, drawing cards uh, to to keep up pace with with a control deck. That's uh, what uh, uh, Erebos is for. Um, as for removal in the sideboard, you have to run to the very fleshes and an agent or three uh, devourers if you want to be able to win against Noya uh, Oros or Blood Baron because mm, Blood Baron or an equipped Superman with lifeline just kills you. Then we have two Dark Betrayals against uh, other black decks and uh, another two copies of Doomblade against uh, other non-black creature decks. 
and I think that's all. Uh, this is a simple deck. I don't see any reason to talk about it any longer, and um, I hope I will be able to smash Michael's uh, construction, and I'll have a lot of fun doing it. Um, see you guys. Okay, guys, this time I'm playing a Band Planeswalker deck. I think that Band Shell is the best one because it has access to Mana Ramp, which is very important because playing Elspeth on turn 4 is much more fun than playing it on turn 6. So, I have 8 uh, Mana Ramp spells. These are 4 Sylvan Caryatids for Cura followers. Uh, then I have uh, some um, creatures on the uh, lower end of my curve, such as Loxodon Smiters, Primazes and Corsairs of Krupix. Corsairs are the best one because they have nice body, 2-4 is a good one for blocking small dudes. Also it provides card advantage and life gain, which is also very important because the deck is rather slow. Um, except for some explosive stars, but basically it's slow. So there are the four uh, Corsairs and four other free mana cost creatures. Um, I decided to split two Brimazes and two Loxodon Smiters because um, in this deck you never want to have two Brimazes uh, on your hand because if they can deal with one, well, you, ju you just want to um, play as many things on the board and then resolve a Planeswalker. Uh, so that those things on the board will protect it. So, uh, smiters are, are very good against control because they can be countered. They are a single creature threat because four power is a lot. Uh, Brimaces are one man army, so they're also good. Uh, both of the, these creatures are good at blocking too. I play three Celestia Charms because they act as a removal sometimes. They, they create a creature. They just fill out the curve and sometimes even the plus two plus two trample is okay. Um, also, for the Tension Spears, this is a premium removal spell. That's one of the reasons you want to play blue. Three Kioras, this is the start of the Planeswalker suit. Kioras are good at protecting other Planeswalkers because they shut down one of the opposing creatures. They also can ramp you into for example, Elspeth from turn 5, which is also okay, they provide card advantage and their ultimate is, is pretty good too. There are three Polucranoses, they are here because they fill out the curve nicely, they are big and they are very good against swarm strategies. Uh, one Archangel of Thun, mm. it's here because I wanted another 5, I wanted it to be a creature and this one is a nice one of it uh, combos pretty good with Corsair of Krupix. It's good on its own. It's good with other creatures. It's just a it's just a very strong card, and I wanted to have access to one in the main. Deck. Okay, so let's talk about the Ajani Mentor of Heroes. This is the the reason I I created this deck because I wanted to test him. So um, the first plus one ability, which is put three counters whichever you like, uh, is, is good, mm. it forces you to play as many creatures as possible, but even if you have a one creature, like, for example, you just have a curious follower, you just make it a 5-5 five, five and it's just a big efficient threat, uh, I like it very much in Ajani, also if you have like three tokens le left from Elspeth, you can make them all 2-2 two, two if you need, it's, it's a very flexible good, um, ability for a deck that has creatures. Um, the other ability that searches for a planeswalker or a creature is obviously very good in this this deck because uh, the the only thing that can, it can find here is detention sphere, Celestia charm, and lands. So basically, it hits every time. And since this deck has very uh, many powerful spells. It will hit quite hard and quite often. Um, and Elspeths, these are the best planeswalkers in the standard metagame, in my opinion. So basically you want to play as many of them as possible, but you don't want four because 
this is too much. You don't want to have like three on your head. You want to have one all the time and sometimes two, but you don't want to get flooded with them like ever. And right now in standard, nobody is ramping into Elspeth. Well, maybe some junk decks sometimes. Yeah, but um, Elspeth mostly is play in some black white decks, some blue white decks. And these are control decks that land Elspeth when, when they want to start winning the game. And I think that other approach when, when you play her on turn 4 is just more unfair. So I'm gonna try this. Mm, mana base. Well, I'm trying this new mana confluence mana fixer. Because, mm, well, here you have like 2 green in Corsair of Prufix, 2 white in Grimas. You need fixing, you, you need a land that provides any color you want and comes into play untapped. I, I very like it about this card. I don't want to play four of them because when you get two or three, it starts becoming painful. And you don't want that against some decks. Ten shocklands, seven temples, and four basic lands. I think it's mm, debatable, obviously. I haven't tested this deck very much. It can be a subject to change. Okay, let's go to the sideboard. In the sideboard, I have another copy of Archangel of Foon. It's very good against some decks like Burn or, or just aggressive strategies. Even more when you can ramp into it and you want to keep the ramp uh, in the deck against uh, aggressive strategies either way, so, so this is very good. Unflinching Courage, which should be in the sideboard of every green-white deck, in my opinion, because there are decks that can't deal with it, and you just put it on a smiter, and it's good game. Some decks can't handle this. Or even if they can, they can't always handle it. Sometimes you just need to keep your Unflinching Courage in hand and play it, creature and see if they can Doomblade it or something. If they can't, you just you just win, like, with black uh, aggressive strategies. Another two smiters, uh, because against some decks you don't want Elspeth, and you want to lower your curve, so blocks of smiters are great there. Uh, five counter spells. Counter spells are obviously against control. You want to be able to protect your planeswalkers against the tension spheres, etc. You want to be able to counter their big threats, their revelations mainly. Also, you want to be able to counter an Aetherling. Aetherling is not something that uh, this deck can deal with. Uh, two copies of Revoke uh, Existence. It's mainly against the Tension Spheres, sometimes against some deck that has like seven gods or six gods, like this blue-white Devotion. I, I think that it's okay there. Uh, to put it against this deck. Uh, Glare of Heresy against White Weenie, against the Tension Spheres. It's just a very flexible, nice card. One Scavenging Goose, because I want another card against aggressive strategies. It's just a card to replace, for example, Elspeth Ajani or, or something like this. And also, there is the 10th Placewalker in the sideboard. It's the Jace. Mm, it comes in against Control. I think I think it's good enough. Well, we will see uh, in future testing, maybe. So this is all, and I hope you enjoyed.